Hello and what is up everyone, it's Thunderbob here, and tonight we're going to be looking at Amudec 2.0. Uh, this is a really, really awesome tool used for setting up the Steam Deck for use with emulation. In this video, we're going to be taking a quick moment to show you Amudec 2.0, how it works with Emulation Station, as opposed to using the Steam shortcuts I showed in the previous video. I'm going to show you how to set up Emudec and uh, some of the new settings in 2.0, my own personal configuration, and uh, yeah, let's just jump right in. Okay, to start with, you need to install Emudeck on the desktop side of the Steam Deck, which will put a link on your desktop that says Emudeck. I'll have a link below where you can actually get that software. From here, it'll give you an option to do a quick or custom. I would go with custom as it does let you configure some things yourself. You need to select where you want your ROMs to be stored. I'm using my SD card. From there, you can pick the device. Obviously, if you're running Steam Deck, select that. If you're running an Amber Deck device, select that. This will allow you to install what emulators you want. Emudeck is basically a piece of software that will install and configure a huge number of emulators all at once. So I would recommend doing them all, but if you're not gonna be using all those systems, obviously, you can pick the ones you want. You can also set up retro achievements. I'm not using them. You can turn on things like game bezels for the systems that utilize them. I would recommend turning them on rather than having just the black space to the sides. You can uh, set up custom resolutions for certain systems, 4x3 or 3x2. 3x2 uh, uh, is uh, stretched a little bit. It really depends. Some of these systems, uh, I feel like going with the stretched look actually is better. Some of them, it's not. It's kind of personal preference. Super Nintendo is the same way. You can go with the original resolution, 4x3, 3x2, or 8x7. From there, you can also set up the aspect ratio for 3D systems. This is kind of nice. I actually like the 16x9 for these systems. I know it's not true to the original release. I think it actually works pretty well on these 3D games. Same thing for GameCube. I run 16x9 16, 16 versus the 4x3. A lot of GameCube games actually had widescreen options available. You can turn on shaders for the handheld systems. This is LCD shaders. And then you can do CRT shaders for the 2D console games. I actually like the shaders for the most part for the 2D games. I usually turn them off, however, on the 3D games, as I feel like they don't actually help as much with 3D games. I think the 2D games really benefit from them. There are different themes available in Emulation Station. I like this simple one. From here, it's going to complete your installation. This will take a few minutes to download set up, configure all of the emulators. You just want to let this run. And when it's done, there's a button in the bottom right if you want to do the Steam ROM manager, which I initially used and I showed off in the previous video, which I'll link below. Uh, I've stopped using it mostly because there were so many icons in Steam, it was kind of becoming overwhelming. And I prefer all of my emulated games in one place in Emulation Station versus having them appear in my Steam library. Now, I'm also going to show you uh, how to actually install your ROMs. In the bottom left, you should be able to select your primary uh, external device when you go into your Dolphin browser. So you click on this primary. There should be an emulator folder here. This was created by Emudec. Uh, you'll have a BIOS folder where you can install BIOS, um, HD patches, things like that. But the main folder we're looking for is this ROMs folder. And all you have to do is dump the specific ROM you want into the specifically named folder. So N64 gets the N64 ROMs, DS, 3DS, PlayStation 2, Wii, etc. You just drop the ROMs in here, and that's really all you need to do to get them set up. And from there, you can actually launch back into game mode. You can go to your library, and there should be something under collections called emulation. Inside there is emulation station, which you'll launch may take a moment the first time you launch it. And here you are. You've got all of your systems you've installed, all of the systems we can configured. And there is a scraper here, which you can select which systems you want to scrape. And it will automatically find the art for all of your games. One other thing is you may want to um, come in here and tell it what to scrape. Uh, for me, I only did artwork. I didn't scrape videos just because I was concerned about the file size, but uh, the images they use are not 
all that sizable even with you know hundreds or thousands of games it's probably not taking up a huge amount of space and you can see here you can turn on and off what content is utilized and i'm just going to briefly show off my setup here in emulation station uh, i've got you know 100 nintendo 64 games uh, this is one system i feel like is difficult to emulate not necessarily because of performance but because of the controller a really crazy Nintendo 64 controller. So some games you will have to go in and manually configure. Uh, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, all run, you know, perfectly, flawlessly. Game Boy uh, Color here as well. I've got a couple of GameCube. Uh, generally runs uh, well. There are some drops occasionally. Uh, Super Nintendo, again, runs really well. Just showing off. Got uh, 138 Super Nintendo games here. Nintendo Switch. This is another game system that's a little bit hit or miss. Wii runs pretty well. Dreamcast runs almost flawlessly. Genesis, perfect. Ton of Genesis games here. It's a fun system. PlayStation. PlayStation 1 runs really well. PlayStation 2, Tony Hawk runs really well. I showed it off in a previous. Now I'm going to spend just a couple of minutes showing off a few games and some of the new uh, changes for Emu Deck 2.0, like this is a GameCube game utilizing the um, widescreen option. By default, you don't have to go in and change anything if you selected that during the Emudeck setup. You can see the performance here. Generally, it's 60 FPS. There are a couple of drops when you're driving around in, in some of the more hectic scenes. But overall, uh, it runs really well. This is a, The Simpsons Hit and Run, which is a really fun GameCube game. And uh, just a fun one to show off here. Uh, you can jump right in the vehicle, and it's almost, it's not quite Grand Theft Auto, but they've got uh, some Grand Theft Auto-like aspects. You can see some frame drops there on the on the graph. Um, but overall, it's definitely playable, and in some cases, I think these games, though they have drops, I think they're still running better than they did on the original systems. Okay, next up, we're going to be looking at one of my favorite games of all time, Contra 3, The Alien Wars. This is such a great game. And I wanted to show this game off specifically for the CRT shaders that I had enabled. Um, this is uh, something you can just turn on in the menu. And I think it is a huge improvement on these old 2D games, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, uh, Genesis. They were made for CRT televisions that had scan lines. And I think in a lot of games, in most games, it helps uh, make these emulators look better. Uh, these games and the art was designed with scan lines in mind, and I think it helps fill in the gaps that the low resolution oftentimes, um, you know, uh, couldn't handle. Um, if you look at some of the old art for these games, and like people have taken shots, and it's like, here's what the game looked like on an LCD, and here's what it looked like in a CRT. In most cases, the CRT actually looked better. Um, and I think for the 2 c systems in particular, these, uh, these uh, CRT, shaders are actually beneficial and here's another super nintendo game zombies eat my neighbors using those same crt shaders and again i think it definitely uh is an improvement with them enabled versus disabled and uh, of course you can pick that from the menu or you can go into the individual game like if you want to if you uh press in the left and right triggers for most of these uh systems you can pull up the retro arch menu and go in and customize these shader options and, and pretty much any option you want. Controls, um, graphics, resolution, almost everything can be customized uh, on a game by game or system by system level. And again, one of my favorite games. I love Zombie Eats My Neighbors. I wish I still had the cartridge. I lost it over the years, but this is just a, a really amazing Super Nintendo game. I would definitely recommend checking this one out. And lastly, I'm going to show you um, another really, really great classic game. This is Castlevania Symphony of the Night. And I want to show this off because I disabled the CRT shaders for PlayStation games because I don't really like them on the 3D games. But there are some 2D PlayStation games, and this is the type of game that you might want to go in and manually enable them if you like those CRT shaders. Uh, you can see here that the CRT shader is turned off because that is how I had it set in the menu so it's kind of um, a personal preference here you could go in to the settings on the individual emulator 
and enable these because there are probably some games you may want those shaders on and there's some that you know they don't really benefit much from so this is another game that you know maybe you go in and, and turn it on versus having it disabled on an entire system level all right well i'm going to end the video here uh if uh, you like this video i do have another older video showing off a lot of more modern systems a lot of switch games running on the steam deck and I'll, I'll link that video down below if there's any specific games you want to see setups or anything let me know uh, i'll be happy to try to uh to provide that uh, if you like this i have a number of steam deck videos on the channel i have a number of uh, vr and modern games and retro games so if you like what i'm putting out there please do like subscribe drop me a comment with your thoughts and again just want to thank everyone for watching and have a great night